Yeah, yeah. Uh. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah. Underrated, underrated, we the What's up, guys? Welcome to the Totem Podcast. We're back. Hope you guys had a happy new year. Good holidays. Merry Christmas to all you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Share, share with anybody. Let us know what new guests you guys would like to have on here. That way we can bring some some impactful people to you guys. What's going on, Eric? How was how was your New Year's? It's going pretty good. So far, so good. You know, you know one one of the things that like I always um, think about, or even like hear about, especially hear about with everybody, especially with the New Year, is like the New Year resolution, and they act like what wh- whatever you put on your list is gonna come to fruition, and just because it's on your New Year's resolution, it's gonna it's gonna come to you within the next two weeks. It's the, the everyone's favorite quote right now. It's new year, new me. Yeah, it is. The the old shit, the did the stuff you did from last year is still gonna follow you back into this year. You you can change, alter some stuff, but it's still with you. You didn't you didn't leave it completely behind just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if this is this, if it's the same person I'm talking to because so many people say new year, new me. It's every fucking year. It's a new version of themselves, but. It's just what they say, but it's not. They're not actually changing anything with their lives. Gotta get that. Gotta get that social media fame. That that's why. New year, new me. That's the. That's, that's the, the best. B- best thing put on your uh, caption on Instagram or whatever. Hashtag. Hashtag. Yeah. So uh, so going off of that, Eric, what? There's some, the New Year's resolution goals. What, the gym's pretty full. What do you What do you think? The that's the the most popular one, right? The. Uh, Gotta get in shape this year for whatever fucking reason. Don't worry though. That the the gyms will only be full for like maybe the next two three weeks. They'll they'll empty you back out. Don't worry. May, maybe the the full month, but I find that very hard to believe. Why? You, why? Why do you think that? Why is it hard to believe? Because it's easy to say you want something, you want to change your life on New Year's Eve when most of the people are probably drinking. Or are you having a fucking shot? Having a shot, drinking, <laughs> having a good time, and be Not, like, you know what? This is the last one for the fucking year. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to stop drinking and all this shit. And once they actually try to do it, it's, they find out it's pretty fucking hard. Which is, that don't get. there's nothing wrong with having a drink and stuff. Yeah. It's just that you're just lying to yourself. You're not lying to anybody else. You're lying to yourself. Everybody, we all like to have a good time, have a drink every now and then, but just keep it real. Keep it real, especially with yourself. It's It's fine to have a drink once in a while, but you can't. I mean, if you if you really want to, you can go and get fucked up every night when you don't fucking remember what the hell happened. But if we're like being honest with each other, like it's if you really want to change yourself, it's not gonna be just for the clout, you know. It's like I can say I'm gonna get in shape all I want, but if I never actually go to the gym, eat right, and do all the things I need to do, it's never gonna happen. Yeah, it's like it starts with the. I feel like it starts all with your mentality too. You got the shitty me- mediocrity mentality for anything. It doesn't have to be just. Don't think it's just finances or it's just fitness. It's it's everything. It's a combination of everything. It's it's hard to find a balance, but I don't know if there is a balance. But I mean, something has to give always sometimes. But it's being aware of the stuff that's actually happening. It's like what they always say. If it was easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, everybody would be rich. If it was easy, everybody would be fit. Everybody would have the car they want, the house they want the spouse they want but it's not easy that's that's what people don't really want to like face the, their truth that it's going to take a lot of fucking work and with like specific goals and stuff it it takes a lot of work but it also takes changing your mentality what well, so so for new year's resolution people that just the start of their stuff you personally what, what do you think is the best thing that people could start off with to better their life say that you know get their fitness or whatever what do you think is the What's your number one tip you would give? My number one tip would be to get in shape. Whether it is whether like if you're fat and obese, just work it, just work yourself off to get to lose that those first initial uh, pounds and shit. Cause that that's like the hardest part is just getting started. Cause once you lose the initial first 10, 20 pounds, then from there it gets easier. Like it, I I, sh- I guess I shouldn't say easier. Like. It's never going to get easier. You just get in a flow and you keep going with your momentum. You just get stronger. Yeah, you just get stronger. And after a while, like the shit chicken, you keep eating rice. Like that's just going to become 
part of the norm and you're not going to eat it so, just because it tastes good but because you fucking have to and because you, you know it's going to give you the results you, you need. have to have that ct fletcher in the back of your mind shut the fuck up and eat that shit bitch that, that's that's <laughs> what i keep fucking thinking about that ct fletcher video i don't eat it because it tastes good i eat it because i'm gonna get the fucking results because of it but with all that people would think that you'd be like oh no you gotta make more money you gotta do this why why does it start with fitness and your health I, I think it starts with your fitness and your health because that just changes how you feel about yourself. Like, confidence booster. Yeah, it's 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 a huge confidence booster. Like you don't even like realize like how much of a fucking like boost it gets. Like once you start feeling good about yourself after like who knows how many how many fucking years of like feeling like shit, start feeling good about yourself, start feeling confident in yourself. Like in the past it might have been a struggle to even choose what outfit you're gonna wear. But then once, you know, like, you're fit, you have more confidence with yourself, you're like, fuck y'all or whatever. Like, it doesn't matter because I'm confident with me and not what I'm wearing. And that's so, the thing, too. The, that's the thing, too. My bad to cut you off. But, like, you're saying, like, yeah, you got to get in shape. But people think, like, oh, I got to get a six-pack. Like, no, like, shit, wherever you're at, you just lose 10, 15 pounds. You'll start looking in the mirror like, damn, like, I look, I f I look pretty good. So if you start, see, you start feeling pretty good, you start acting pretty good and – you just in a better mood and all this stuff. That's why, I mean, just to kind of top it off, like what you're saying, why fitness is probably the number one, is the number one place to start to make a difference in your life. It's also the hardest one because when they start out with like, when people start out with their fitness goals, people think they have to go down and get a six pack or else it's not going to happen. And that's why so many people fail because they start going to the gym consistently for like one or two weeks. They don't see the six pack going coming in or, or their fat going down, so they get disappointed with each other, with themselves, and then they just quit instead of keep working at it. Because, like, the people don't put on all the weight overnight, so you can't expect it to lose overnight. Like, it for a lot of people, it's, like, over a period of, like, two, three, four years that they just keep getting bigger and bigger before they actually fucking wake up and realize one day, like, I'm fucking fat. So if it took you, like, two, three, four years to fucking put it on, you can't expect it to lose, to lose all of it in a fucking month. Yeah, it's going to fucking take time and you just have to fucking keep at it. Trust in the process and fucking just hold yourself accountable to make sure you're doing what you need to do to get down. Hey, Eric, but you don't understand, man. It, it runs in my family. It runs in the genes. What, what, what do you mean? Like, it runs in my family. Everyone's like that. I mean, there's nothing I can do. No one runs in your family. That's, that's the problem. But that's they the say, problem. but that's the thing. They say obesity runs in your family eating habits and discipline and everything else so runs in your family. That that should give that person an, an extra motivation to go to the gym and prove everybody wrong. To cut the fucking cycle. To cut the cycle and start a new cycle for your family. Because it's easy to say, oh, it's in my genes, I have a fat gene and everything. Yeah, you probably, probably do have a fucking fat gene. That's just going to make it so much sweeter when you get down to fucking start getting fit. And it's going to make you feel a whole of a lot better. And that's the thing. Right now, it's it's day four, the 4th of January. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people right now already broke their New Year's resolutions that they're going to eat healthier, they're going to do better, they're going to, say, read a book or wh whatever it was you were going to do. But it's like, And then they give up. They're like, oh, I already broke it. Shit, I'll just stop. Like, dude, you got, you're on day four. You got 361 more days to go. That, that And that's the thing with people. People... They want it now or like they break it and then they're just like, ah, no, I'm done. Like, you don't even know. You can start again and keep going. But that's it's the easy way out. It's easy to blame somebody else for for what you don't have or or the way you are. But when, when you when you blame somebody else and you victimize yourself, you have no uh you have no power over the situation. You just gave power to something else. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have power over it, you're not going to be able to do shit. First, you got to be, you got to take responsibility. I'm like this because of this. I'm broke because I fucking spend too much money and I like to go shopping. I'm overweight because I fucking don't eat what I, don't watch what I eat. I'm not, I'm, I'm always in a shitty mood because I have the job I don't fucking like. And, and until you become responsible over this stuff, you're not going to be able to change it. And I know, like, a lot of people might be fucking kind of laughing at themselves right now because they see me talking about fucking fitness and shit. Like, who the fuck is this fat nigga to tell me what the fuck to do? 
to like fu- a fucking a year and a half ago, I was fucking three hundred twenty pounds. I'm not fucking proud of it. I'm pretty fucking disappointed with myself to get up that that fucking high. But then I've been fucking you know putting the actual work. Not just say I'm gonna be going to the gym. Not just say I'm fucking gonna eat right. But actually fucking doing it. That's the thing, like. Like you guys listen to me, like, oh, he's he's not that big or or whatever, or he's too big, he's fat, and I'm I'm ripped over here. But it's like, that's the fucking journey. Like he, you hear it about people, like we've done, it, like that we're not where we want to be, we probably never will, but we've done the shit. I mean, me personally, like last just last year, I've probably been over down like 30, 30 pounds, probably. Eric's probably like what, like 50, 60 pounds. Fifty pounds. So it's like we've done the shit. It's not like we're just talking shit here. And and sometimes if it hurts your fucking feelings, you should question yourself why it hurts your fucking feelings. If the jacket fits. If the jacket fits, snuggle right into that motherfucker. Right away. Put it on. It's your size. One size fits all. And it's like, also goes, ties into another thing, not just to judge people just by looking at them, like judge a book by its cover. Like, yeah, you might see me like pretty fucking big guy right now, but you don't know like what I've like. The trajectory. How to, how to go through, how to go through to, to get to how I'm looking right now. Like, just, like, if you see a skinny person, like, like probably laugh at him, like, oh, this, he needs to eat more. He's too fucking skinny. Scrawny guy. But maybe that person has a problem with gaining weight, and they've been trying to gain weight, and you're just fucking criticizing him about being skinny all the time. Probably fucking makes him feel like shit. And that's, like, everybody's, like, at their own point in their own journeys. So you can't really just fucking just judge anybody by where they're at. Yeah, and it's like everyone has a battle that you know nothing about. But then, too, it's like... You kind of have to be real with yourself because, yeah, you have a battle. You're battling a battle inside that nobody knows what it's about. But then you can't also be like, uh, only God can judge me. You can't judge. Like, come on, man. That's not going to fucking better yourself either. You got to be real. Got to fucking be real because the person you can't lie to is that person in the mirror. He sees you every day. He knows when you're fucking lying. It's like Santa Claus. He knows when you're, he knows when you're fucking lying. He knows, he knows this stuff. He's watching. Somebody you can't escape, and it's the person you go to sleep with every day. Yeah. Well, and, and another thing that, like, was just, like, that, that goal that I think everybody else should, like, start with. Like, it'll also just start changing your, your mentality. Like, slowly and surely, like, it'll start changing, changing what, what you think about certain things because you're actually changing yourself, and you're pushing yourself to, to like, be a different person. Shit, it's like if you just you just kicked your ass at the gym. You were there for a while. You just beat your you like you just went all out at the gym. And you did that like in the morning, first thing. There's probably gonna be no physic thing physically more that you can do hard that day. Like you just depending where you start, you just ran a mile, you know, or whatever, whatever your fitness level was at. But I mean you just did something really hard that you didn't think you were capable of and you did it, the rest of the day is easy. Yeah. That's why that's why it starts with the fitness. Because the other stuff, it'll just come. Like your your body and your mind will be used to doing hard stuff. Yeah. So, and what, what, give us your favorite quote, Eric. Favorite quote. Let's go. Um, hard times create hard men. Hard men create easy times. Easy times create soft men. Soft men create hard times. Break it down for us. Break it down for the people that don't understand it. Break it down. It's like... In the world, there can be hard times, or here in the U.S. or whatever, or in your life, there can be hard times, and that's going to create hard men, because the men or were, women don't get fucking offended. Men or women, it's just men for to include everybody. Um, but it makes that group of people to become hard to be able to push through those times, right? And so then those like hard men, hard women, hard group of people. They they went through those hard times and they don't want to see other people suffer, so and they for they start creating easier times for their for their children and stuff and for the future. So that's when they like the hard men create easy times, and because a lot of people grow up in the easy times and all this, you know, they don't have to grow up the way, the same way the the men previously had to grow up in the hard times. So they're just like naturally like grow up a little softer. They didn't have to go through all that bullshit that they had to go through. And since they didn't have to go through all that bullshit, they don't have to, like, fight to create an easier life for, like, their kids or their future. So they just leave shit how it is, and it just creates hard times again, and the fucking cycle keeps repeating. 
What's, what, what position are we in right now? Where are we at in the... I think we're in the uh, the soft man creating hard times. So everyone has the bitch, bitch mentality. Everyone's soft. Everyone's feeling sorry. They gave him free shit from the government. And just like looking, look, like looking back historically, like we had World War Two, we had Vietnam War, we had fucking like our grandparents or parents that like grew up in that had to go through that shit, and they know what the fuck it took. To, like th- those, I feel especially compared to now are the hard times and they create and they like raise their their kids to be up in like in a in a softer environment i guess and now like people think it's like everything like the world owes them everything they feel entitled to shit yeah they feel entitled to stuff and that's the thing people like now like it is fucking soft men or women <laughs> people like now teenagers not all of them but a lot of the teenagers they you got shitty service, you got shitty Wi-Fi, you start getting pissed off. Back then, like, yeah, times change, but people used to have to fucking walk to go get water or food and stuff, and you're over here crying because you, your Wi-Fi signal's dying down a little bit. There's people still today who have to go do that shit in third world countries. And people just fucking, they just choose to, like, close their eyes to, the, to that hardship that people are going through today and think of it as just something in the past. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? we're we're in we're in an interesting time for sure, though. Interesting time, especially with now. the The one thing I think about is just with all this like gender shit. Like, it's cool if you want to like if calling yourself a certain name or something's gonna make you feel better, but that doesn't mean you have to force everybody else to fucking to call you that. Like, if you want to call yourself that, that's cool. It's like, cool. It's you do cool. you. You do you, but you can't fucking force everybody to fucking. Conform to your standards because not everybody was brought up the way you were brought up. There's still people today that are going through hard times, like in the Middle East and shit. Like, that shit ain't easy. They're going through hard times and they're coming over here for political asylum or whatever. And you expect everybody to just start, like, changing their, their beliefs right away. It's not going to happen. Yeah, every, I feel like everybody, I mean, we're, we've all been guilty of it. We have all had some stages like that in our lives, but you'll go through it and it's like, you feel like you're, like, everyone has to, like, like, you're the center of attention for everything. It's like, no, not really. Like, dude, you can leave, you can get fired from your job. You can leave anything. They'll, they'll replace you. They won't care. Mm-hmm. But I, I like, I, I kind of want to go back to that, uh, the hard times, easy men stuff. Like, it's the, a lot of the, the parents, of course, you don't want your children to go through that stuff. So you want to give them everything. And they give them everything. And what's going to happen when they don't have anything? Or what's going to happen when you don't have the ability to give them whatever, whatever it is, financially stuff, their shoes, their new shoes, their whatever, their new cell phone or whatever, they're going to fucking crumble like a fucking cookie because they're not used to that shit. And that's cool. Like, don't get me wrong. Everything's cool. Nobody wants nobody to suffer. But in the suffering is what where you become who you actually are. Who you, who you're actually, destinated to be, I guess, because it's cool. Your parents give you give your money. It doesn't matter how like, once you're like in that teenage years, you know, you can start working and stuff. And a lot, a lot of people, teenagers don't. That's that's fine. Or their parents don't let them work. That's fine. That's cool. But just remember, as long as you're on daddy's money, daddy and mommy's money, you got to do with what did they say. And then people complain. I'm moving out. I'm moving out. Just- Shut. Shut the fuck! Shut the fuck up! You ain't going anywhere. You're you're too, you're too soft. You don't know what to, what you would actually do in the real real world. And that's fine. That you can you can think with the way you want or whatever. But just that that that's who we are creating as parents. We're creating when we. I mean, we we're doing this to ourselves. But I mean the the big the big thing is like you, you start at the gym because that's doesn't matter how much money you have or whatever like in the gym you're gonna find who what you're what you're actually like made out of you're gonna quit when you start breathing a little harder if you're gonna keep pushing through the whole mile or through the whole workout whatever you're doing that's that's the that's the thing no yeah or or, or another thing i just thought about is like you don't have to make like your kids like suffer you know like the same way you suffered 
Because, yeah, like, obviously, you probably want a better life for your kids and shit. But it's about, like, teaching them the right shit. You can't, like, say you didn't have fun growing up or whatever. You can't just, like, which many people do. They just give their fucking kid a tablet and they don't fucking, they're like, oh, you better take care of it. But they don't actually, like. The tablet's the new babysitter. Yeah, exactly. But they don't have to, like, actually tell them to, like, hey, if you want a tablet or some shit, you got to take out the trash or do this or do something else. They don't make them, like, like work for it. It's just, like, they're entitled to it, so they, they fucking get a new tablet. They feel like, oh, what's this brakes? They have to buy me a new one. It fucking broke. Yeah, and then they'll fucking keep breaking the tablet over and over again, and then you fucking have to buy them three different fucking tablets. And then they have the they have the the parents that have a flip phone over here, but their son has to have the best thing or the best car, even though they can't fucking afford it. They can't afford it, but we gotta look cool for the people that don't care. And that, and that reminds me of a uh, of a conversation I overheard during uh, New Year's. Um, it was this lady. She was she was just talking freely, just speaking her mind, and so you're being nosy. I was being nosy, okay. of course. You know, I like to call it observant. Not nosy, um, but she was uh, saying that uh, that her kind of people, like her kids and like her family, like why do they bother bother to dream about wanting nice stuff, about wanting to make a lot of money, about wanting to live in a nice house, if they're if they know they're not gonna be able to ever afford it, no matter how hard they work, like they only deserve a certain amount. It's a fucking kick in the balls right there, huh? Yeah. Go ahead, they, cut the wings off. They they don't deserve to have all this stuff because just that's just not who they are. And when I when I heard this, it took everything in me not to fucking just blow up on her and just start telling her off. And there and and then, and then I didn't say anything because I just wanted to listen and see what everybody else thought about that. And you know you know what everybody else said? Nothing. They just like accepted it. And, and that fucking that shit broke my heart. And and then there, that there's your your follow up question: Who are you taking advi- advice from? Not just you, Eric, like every everyone. Who are you taking advice from? It's cool, yeah. You can listen to people, but actually doing what they told you or stuff like that, putting it into practice is different. You can listen to a lot of people. Doesn't mean you have to do what the fuck they said. If that person doesn't have the life you want, don't fucking listen to them. Don't yeah. fucking take advice from a guy that's like, say, in, oh, you should do this workout at, at the gym. You should do this one, dude. This one's good. And then you look at him, but, and he can't even do it. So it's like, uh, really, dude? Or or take advice from your your drunk uncle on uh, on New Year's who's trying to give you all his life lessons and in that fucking 30, 30 minutes he's with you and then doesn't fucking even remember about it the next day. Just keep in mind he's drunk. And that's what... That's the thing to make it, to make it go smoother, I guess you could say. So he's drunk, so he's like, do you want the drunk lifestyle? Maybe you do. Maybe you do. But that's just, that's just the, the way to look at the stuff. Another thing I kind of want to go off of, Eric, is, uh, is a question I think is, is good, and it's very hard for people to fucking answer. Because you have to answer it, you have to ask yourself first. First you have to be conscious of it, and then ask yourself, and then take action. If you think there, if, if you think there's to take action. If not, if you're happy the way you are, cool. But it's stuff, people don't ask enough questions, I think. Maybe because you got in trouble in school and you'd ask too much questions because you, you want to be quiet or whatever. Are you in charge of your life are you actually in charge of your fucking life could you actually be like uh no nah, you know what today i'm just gonna hang out with the fam or hey you know what i'm gonna go bored today could you M- most of you would be like yeah of course i am fuck yeah i am that's what everybody i just i just call into work and then <clears throat> no, but see that that's the problem you went and you had to ask that person if it was cool for you to go so are you in charge of your life or does your job define your life? That that's that's the big question. Everybody thinks they're in charge. Everybody wants to act all hard and stuff. Are you in charge of your life? Stop showing up to work. See what happens. See how fast they come pit, tow your car, or they take your house. Like, 
I'm not saying to stop working. I'm just saying when the stuff is needed to be done, are you actually in charge and be like, hey, you know what? I want to do this today. Can you? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Depending on the the criteria, I guess, you have for yourself, for your lifestyle you want to have. But that that's the thing. Are you in charge of your time? Because that's one thing money can't buy. Can't buy time. Nope. So are you in charge of it or no? Or do you let your boss tell you when you can take your days off? Do you let him tell you what when you can fucking grab lunch? When you can fucking go home? If you can take the holidays off, if you're going to fucking work late. Are they fucking in... So who's in charge? Stop acting like you're in charge. You're not fucking in charge. Everybody wants to think like that because nobody likes to humble herself and be like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, dude, my job, yeah. And then we go to another question. Why, why are you like that on your job? Because you create a lifestyle? Because you got some credit card? You got some debt that you need to pay off? Most, live, most men and women live life in quiet desperation. Yeah. They just want to fucking run. Why do people get a fucking vacation? They're pumped for their fucking vacation because they want to run away from the world they have. That's they why. They want to escape from it and taste something they wish they could have every day. Don't worry, Monday will fucking be back and you'll fucking be hating your life again. It's a whole fucking circle. That plane ride home is going to fucking feel like shit. You're going to feel like shit on the way home. You're like, fuck, I have to go back to work. If you like your job, cool. We all work. We all got to do this stuff. But are you in charge? Because you just be like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take today off. I'm going to do this. My kids have a an event at school, a soccer game. I'm going to go to the... Hey, bud, you you gotta stay late today at work. You can't you can't you can't leave early. So, starts off with stop lying to yourself. That's or, the biggest thing. Or another thing is like if you have a sick family member or something that needs to be that you really would like to be there for them, but then your job's like, hey, you know what? I I still need you to come in. I still need you to do this. I still need you to do that. Like, yeah, job, a job gives you your security, secu- your security blanket, like that consistent paycheck and all that, but they own you. The what? What'd you say? Say that again? Say that again. I don't think people heard that shit. They give you the what? They give you your, your security blanket. The fucking security blanket. And that's why people don't want to take a chance on themselves and to, to better their lives and the lives of the people around them. Exactly. But then it's the security blanket. They can fire you whenever the fuck they want. So it's not really that secure. You think it is. Society makes you think it is. Society and you want to think it is like that it is. But is it? Because if you if you quit or if they fire your ass for whatever reason or you die, you know, they'll fucking have uh, a, a, a now hiring fucking poster the next fucking week. Looking for your replacement. Now taking applications. That's the thing. I don't I don't think people like to ask themselves the hard questions. Like that one. Are you in charge of your time? Like, do you have the life like you want? Like, are you where you want to be physically, financially, emotionally? People don't ask... People don't... People, a lot of people know, but they, they kind of want to stay away from that because they most people know the answer deep down. They know the fucking answer. And they don't want to... I mean, that's fine. I mean, it's... I don't... I mean, I don't fucking blame you. It's not easy. But it's reality. Maybe that should be the new New Year's resolution. Just be real with yourself. Be real. Look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself these hard questions and see, what you, see where you're actually at in life. That, that, that thing's like... Uh, overused i think keep it 100 people just say yeah keep it 100 yeah keep it and then the 100 emoji yeah yeah keep it 100 like do you know what the fuck that means people 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 just say this stuff just to fit in in society around people i guess i should say around people that they don't even care about or they or the, the, the the other that people don't even care about them it's fucking it's a, it's a it's a stuff to think about. For what do sure. you think, Eric? Yeah, 
it's it's always it's always shit you should be thinking about not just cuz it's new year's and you're trying to reflect on your life or everything but do it i don't know do it every couple months just do it consistently so you know so you actually know if you're improving or not or whatever you know yeah yeah for sure dude yeah i mean we got a little deep on that one we got a little started going <laughs> some down some rabbit holes but shit shit fucking pisses me off when you start thinking about stuff like that it's like come on man like stop stop thinking that everything is against you when you're the one against yourself the pr- that, that's that's the big thing like you're against yourself and you think the whole world's against you and come on man fuck be real with yourself be real be actually real with yourself yeah yeah but well appreciate you guys for being on we're gonna be we're gonna be bring you guys some new some new guests and stuff let us know like we told you at the beginning in the comments or message us if you guys know people that are uh that have good story good impact in the community or whatever let us know so we can have them on like subscribe follow share our page with people that you think that should hear this get their their year started off right you know start questioning themselves also we got some we got some new stickers water bottle stickers or whatever laptop stickers whatever you guys want message us they're they're free we're just giving message them out us, text us if you want some you know let, let us know, know. They're, they're free just let us know i mean and uh what do you got eric you got anything to close us out and remember guys an act of rebellion yeah, just a yeah. question peace underrated, out guys underrated, we the underrated, 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 underrated.